Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Salon de Paris by Talon Strikes Studios. This is a game that takes about an hour to an hour and a half for two to four players, and it's for ages 14 and up. And in the game Salon de Paris, you are playing as a painter. Your objective, to become the greatest painter of all time in Salon de Paris. You are going to face critics, you are going to gain apprentices, and you're going to acquire favor as you gather pieces of canvas, craft paintings with them by using paint, and then place them down in the gallery. As you place them in the gallery, you'll score points from the critics, from how you place them and their value, and the types of themes presented on your paintings. The game is going to end when the gallery is basically filled based on the number of players, in which case everybody gets an extra turn, and whoever has the most points in all the various categories is the winner. There's a variety of choices to take. This is an action management game where you'll be using your worker, moving to different locations around the studio, and gathering actions and bonus actions to hopefully be able to create the best paintings possible and place them in the studio. That's the basic idea of the game, talk about the setup, basics of how to play, and of course my review. Setting up the game is a little bit intricate, but we'll get into it and I think you'll get it as I explain it. The first thing you do is you take both game boards and you place them down within reach of both all players on the tabletop. Then, based on the number of players, you're going to fill in locations on the gallery. If you are playing a three-player game, you are going to fill in the fourth-player row. If you are playing a two-player game, you will fill in the third-player row. Thusly, the smaller the game, the less number of players you're playing with. Then, we'll just start from the left-hand side board to the right-hand side board, and we'll go on to the player boards. On the left-hand side game board, the first thing you're going to want to do is finish the top left-hand portion of the board. Take five random overpaint tiles, they're basically smaller tiles than the actual painting tiles, and place them in the spaces, and the rest of the tiles place face down next to the space. Then, you'll take five of these circular tokens and place them either face up or face down randomly in the five random spots, and that should give you a pentagon of a track. Then, you'll take this little guy here, it's a little green token, and place him on one of the circles, one of the action spaces. You'll go down the game board, and any time you run into a rectangular small space, place one of the random rectangular space tokens. And you can do that for all the spaces around the game track. Then, you're going to go ahead and place down your studio card deck. Shuffle it and place two on the spaces provided. Set aside the apprentice tokens and place them face up near that location as well. Moving along the game board, there are more rectangular spaces, and then you're going to come across spaces that require your personal cubes. In a three-player game, I'm choosing to play as black, orange, and purple. I will place all of the uh, each player's cube on the circular cir on the circle or zero space on the favor track, and then I'll place one of each player's cube on the lowest rung of each of the three colored um, reviewer spaces. So, so there's going to be a space with a white cube, and that's where you'll place each of the player's cubes. Rounding off to the middle of the game board, these are where you're going to have your paint tokens. Uh, they have a different theme and a different color. So this theme is a, a, an apple and the color is green. Place them from the game bag. I have a random game bag from Moonshell I'm using here. Shuffle them up and then just deal them out. There should be a total of 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 16, and 17. Each of the players is also going to get a worker or a meeple, which you will place right in the middle of the game board. Then we'll take a look at the studio over here, or the gallery. This is where you're going to have uh, four spaces for each of the canvases you will need. Ones, twos, threes, and fours. Just select them and place them in the spaces available. On the right-hand side of the game board, like I said, depending on the number of players, this will be used to block off certain uh, columns um, in order to prevent the number of, based on the number of players, to prevent extra spaces from appearing. There's also five starter paintings. These are going to be random colored tiles, which you can distribute in the top two sections and the bottom three in a random order. Lastly, you're going to get these bonus tokens. These are squares. They're smaller than even the, the overpaint tiles, which you will place face up in the locations in the squares on this grid here with the painting icon. The extra block for two players, and if you have any additional ones of these tokens, you can set aside you won't need them. The last thing is your player board and starting cards and items. Your player board is going to be a sheet which you are going to start with two randomly selected starter cards. Discard one and keep the other, and you will be able to gain all the benefits provided on that card. Additionally, you are going to get paintings based on player order. 
If you're the first player, you get no bonus paintings other than what you get on your starter card. And then after the first player, you will get two, three, and then four paintings from the bag to start with, which you can place inside of your own personal little, little painter's gallery here. You're also going to have these tokens based on your color, the little round discs, which you will place on the circles provided to you on your game board. Additionally, there's a three spot, which is on the left-hand side of those. Place three extra tokens there as well. Then you're basically ready to be in the game. Make sure that the starting player has a starting player marker and let's go ahead and get into how to play the game. Okay, so you are the last person to visit an art dealership, which means that you are the first player to go. And each player's meeples are in the middle of the game board. The first round of play, you can basically move anywhere you want. And we're going to skip the first round other than to tell you that you can go to one of the many locations and then choose a spot on the track that doesn't have a player currently there. There are many locations, the market, the academy, the salon committee, the studio, the art dealership, and the cafe. So we'll just go ahead and move these guys to random locations on the game board and we'll start with round two so I can give you an ex extreme example, not extreme example, but a more example detail of play. I'm orange, I'm going first, and it's now the second round. So first thing that happens is movement. You can move one space for free. Two spaces is gonna, is gonna cost you one um, piece of, of, of painting or one piece of paint here. Um, and then three spaces is two paints. If I want, and I'm at the salon committee and I wanna go to the art dealership on the market, it's free. I can go from here over to an adjacent location onto a space that's not occupied and it won't cost me anything. I would, then I would perform my actions. However, if I wanted to go to a space that's semi-adjacent, so the next space, like the academy or the cafe, I would have to get rid of a paint from my board. And then finally, if I wanted to go all the way across, all the way adjacent to the studio, it would cost me two for moving three spaces. And that's how movement works in the game. Okay, now you get movement. We'll just simply go ahead and move to the market. I don't have any paintings anyway, so I would move to the market, and then I would select one of the spaces that are unoccupied. I select the space, um, and when I select any space, when you go to any space in the game board, there are little circles represented with potentially nothing or an icon. Most of the icons, if not all of them, are just paint. This one here has paint and it says three, which means the locations I move from, so it's the salon committee to the middle, uh, from the middle to the market, I can now select three pieces of paint uh, from these locations here. It's basically the, the path that I move to get from and to the next location, and I can choose any of them to remove. I can move all three from one area, I can move um, two from one and one from another. And I'll just go ahead and take all three of these. When you get them, you place them on your board. The next thing you do is the action adjacent, and the action adjacent is going to be, in this case, being able to select a canvas, and this is a canvas for two. Most of the time in the game, when it says two or three or four, you can have any kind of combinations. In this case, I can select a two, or I can select two ones. If it's a five, I can take a four and a one, or two, two twos if I wanted, and just ignore one of them. So it's really up to you. The most you can take is two, though and the most you can have is four. So in this case, I'll just take this bad boy here and place it adjacent to my player board. If I want, and I have apprentice tokens, which are these little guys here, I can take bonus actions. I can do this before my starting actions, after, or in between. These are going to let me do additional things by going on the track or placing over paintings, all these other things I haven't really explained to you, but basically they're just bonus actions that I can take. After that, I will check to see if I need to refill any of the cards or if I need to refill the paintings. The only time I refill paintings, though, is if an entire row or column, I should say, has been removed. So in this case here, all three are gone. So I would go into the bag, dig out three new ones and place them randomly in these locations here. And my turn would then end and it would be the next player's turn. And they would get a chance to move. They would get a chance to take actions and they would get a chance to refill the board if needed. Now, I'm not going to go into all the detail of all the actions because there's plenty of videos out there that already do that and probably you're going to do it better than me, but I can tell you what each of them do and generically. The market, as you know, is going to let you get paint and that's what all of them will let you do and it will let you get canvas. Canvas is what you need to go over here onto this board. The Academy. The Academy is going to give you these cards here. These cards you can place on your game board, provided those little, those little tokens have been removed from it, thusly giving you bonus actions or abilities, allowing you to move in certain ways, or even actually extra things you can do when you do a specific type of action. And they're worth victory points at the end of the game.
They're also going to let you get apprentice tokens. These are the tokens that you can discard on your turn when you would like to take bonus actions of the little rectangle pieces next to the location that you're at. They all do something different and they tell you on the little tokens. The studio. The studio is a way in which you're going to get to paint. You'll get to take your pieces here. You'll get to put them on your canvas. And this is how you make them. Over here is the cafe. The cafe is a little interesting. It will actually let you move this little token here, one, two, or three spaces, take the action on the, on the circle that you land on, and then you'll get a bonus overpaint token that you can choose from either the left-hand side or the right-hand side, which eventually, and maybe hopefully, it will go on. And you can see here, maybe I have this little fire blue icon. Maybe I still want uh, this, I want, I want to be blue, which it has to be when you're covering with an overpaint. And now I've got two crosses, which is plenty of reasons why, why you would want that in the game. But that's basically what an overpaint does. Um, but otherwise you'll get to take these bonus actions that they can do pretty much anything I'm gonna be discussing here in this game. The next area here, this is the art dealership. This is where you're gonna be trying to gain favor with the different like reviewers slash critics. Um, and you can go on these spaces. They'll obviously give you these little tiles here, but they're also going to move up on these tracks here. These tracks are going to improve your, um, your multipliers for these objectives. So basically objectives. This objective here is to have pairs of green uh, paints. This is going to be to have over paints. Uh, this is for every two paintings that you place down. And there's multipliers of one, two, and three. And then in between them, there are actions that you can take, whether it be increasing your favor, uh, whether it be to gain apprentices or even be able to hang paintings. Uh, then the next area down here is the salon committee. This is the area where you're mainly gonna be um, able to place these uh, hang, pa hang paintings onto this area of the gallery. If you want, you when you place on one of these two areas, you will take one or two actions below, and there are four of them, they're the little rectangles. They're not actually bonus actions, they're actions. And you can take one of them or two based on where you place. One is you can place an overpaint, one is you can gain a favor, one is that you can gain one of uh, these uh, apprentices, and the last one is you can hang. And whenever you choose an action that isn't to hang, you'll move that hang action to that location. So you'll never be able to take the same action more than once. Hanging a painting's pretty cool too. When you hang a painting, after you've gathered the paint, gathered the canvas, put the paint on the canvas, and then you wanna place it in here with this action, you are going to need to follow certain rules. Rule number one, you have to place your painting on an adjacent painting of the same color. Rule number two, when you want to push the painting farther into the mat, there's a one, two, three, four, and a five, you must be able to place any of your paints two adjacent paints that match up to that number. So for instance, if this was purple, or yeah, purple, and I had a purple paint, and I had just one, that would work in the one column. If, however, I had a two, and I had a purple and a blue, and I wish to put it, and I can put it in any way I want as long as it matches the color that I'm attaching it to, in this angle, I can't do that on its own because I'm in the two slot and I need to have two of my paintings match at least two other ones. Now it could be there, now you could obviously have two purples and as long as everything around it is purple, you'd be fine. But in this case, I wouldn't be. That's where favor comes in. Favor will allow you to spend the favor and you'll be able to utilize that as adjacent painting. So if I only have one painting that's adjacent and I wanna be in that two area, I can spend a favor and now I technically count and I can place down the painting. Any of the icons that you cover up will be discarded and you will use it as a bonus action. And that's how you hang them up. The game is basically gonna end as, as players continually go around taking turns. Eventually, uh, in a two, three, and a four player game, there's a number of spaces that are gonna be left over on in this gallery here. Obviously, with more players comes uh, more spaces available left over, and then you'll have one more round. So let's just say, like, in a three-player game, there's you need five spaces left over. Once there's only five left, everyone takes an extra round, and the game ends. And then you score points. And there's a variety of ways to score points. One way is the paintings that you have of the same type of theme. So if I have two of these trees here uh, on a painting, that's gonna score me two points. If I had a four space with two trees and I had two pillars, that would score me only two points. It's the most of only one of them. Additionally, I'll score points 
for how far the painting is along the middle of the row here. So in this case, it was a two, I would score the max one. Instead of one, I would score two. If it had gone to three, I would score three. And that's how those guys work. You'll score points for studio cards. Studio cards will be placed in these locations here. And basically after you finish a painting, to note, note that it's yours and to note that you finished it, you'll be placing these little markers on it. You will be able to place these cards here. It basically opens up those slots for studio cards, which are, like I said before, actions and bonuses that you can gain as you gather them. And they're also gonna have a victory point in the top left-hand corner, so you'll score with those. And then um, you'll also score points with your favor track. Whatever extra favors that you have left will count towards your victory total. And then the big boys. The big boys are these guys. These are like the main objectives of the game. There's a multiplier um, on each of the tracks. So you'll take the multiplier. Then you'll determine how many of these you have fulfilled. So if you have four pairs of, of green and you have your multiplier up to three, it would be four times three, which is gonna net you 12 points. And you'll do that for each one of these. And to note, there are quite a few different objectives that you can have from game to game, but you're only ever gonna have one for each category in each game. You'll tally up all those points, and whoever has the most points is the winner, with finally, there also being an additional way to gain one point for each painting that you have finished but not placed on the game board. If there's a tie, then it's whoever has the highest scoring painting, which will be determined based on theme and how far along on the game board it is. And there you go. That's how you play Salon de Paris. Hopefully it's a good understanding, but if you want a more detailed one, like I said before, there's a link down below. Let's review it. When you begin this game, I would say that for an average player who hasn't played a lot of games, this might seem like a very complex game. There's a lot of locations, each location has a lot of different action spots, and each of the action spots can give you bonus actions. You can get the amount of these tiles here based on where you land on, and then the action to the far right, and then you can also spend apprentices to gain bonus actions. But in reality, this game is rather simple in what you need to do. Now, it's complex in the variety that you have, but to note, the main thing you're doing is gathering those tiles, gathering the canvases, placing them on, and then placing them down into this studio or gallery here, in which case you'll score points at the end of the game based on how far you've got and how many of the same theme you have inside the painting. There's certain restrictions as to how you apply them and there's bonuses as to how you place them, as well as of course there are these guys here which kind of want you to do certain things with your paintings and each game is going to be different. This, specifically this game here would be, I want you to apply a double paint or an over paint over all your paintings that you can I want you to have as many painting as possible in uh, sets of two, and I want them to mainly be green. And so there is a kind of fight towards these guys here. Or if you're mainly going for one in particular, maybe you only want to get a multiplier of three from this guy here, you would actually try and move this, um, basically like your, you, want, you want to satisfy this critic the most, you'd move your token all the way up, which is going to net you bonus points and actions that might benefit you based on this specific type of, uh, of, of objective piece, right? Um, each of the locations has its own unique little bonuses and things you can do, but for the most part, each location satisfies a need that you, that you require. You need canvas, go to the market. Would you require bonus actions and maybe even additional extra actions that you can do uh, or additional um, bonus actions on top of your bonus actions? Go to the academy. How about you want to go to the studio so that you can start painting, taking pieces from your player board and placing them onto your canvas, thusly being able to remove these tokens to gain new studio cards? Then yes, studio it is. The cafe, bonus actions, and overpaint. Maybe you want to go to the art dealership. That's where you can start to schmooze with the critics and specifically focus on one of them, two, or even all three, in order to gain bonuses and multipliers to allow you to score points at the end of the game based on this gallery over here. And then finally, the salon committee. This is a place where you're going to be able to choose some bonus actions that will give you favor, that will allow you to place the paintings on the game board here, and of course, overpaint or even to gain additional apprentices. All the while you're focusing on movement, where you move matters as well. You don't just want to go from location to like, I don't want to just get the paint, get the canvas, place the canvas on the paint or paint on the canvas, and then go ahead and place them here because you need to satisfy the conditions of these guys here and the board here. And so you might have to move and take different actions in different ways to gather the specific tiles that you need. You're not always gonna have the exact color or themed tile when going from one location to another. And because of that, that, prevents, that presents the variety 
and the thoughtfulness that you have to take in the game when it comes to choosing your actions. I love the idea of the apprentices and the ability to gain bonus actions and how you place them down and when you choose to utilize them. Now you can only use one of them for each of the rectangular pieces, uh, but on some game boards, like specifically the market space, you can actually do two, one for each action. Uh, even the cafe and the uh, salon are cool because they kind of provide a variety of bonuses that might not be as super strong for any specific type of action, but you can take a variety of different ones and there's certain ways in which you need to hang paintings down and maybe you can't do so when visiting the art dealership on the specific character here. Um, this is a game that is on its surface if you played a lot of Euro type games, worker movement slash placement. It's kind of a worker placement game with movement rules. Um, it seems kind of simple and straightforward in comparison, but once you get into the meat and potatoes of the game, you start to see how placement matters, how where you move matters, and what actions you need to take. And you kind of have to decide based on what's available to you. And luckily in this game, you don't have to like think directly on your turn. You can think kind of as players are going. The only changes that mainly happen in the game are the different colors and themes that are on the game board when you're moving from location to location, which can possibly change your movement and thus keep some variety in the game as well. The quality of the game is excellent. This is a prototype copy. It's not gonna come with this moonshell bag for my, wife, for my wife's game, but I figured I'd have it here. Um, and it's going to have probably better quality pieces, but what is present here already is excellent. This is exactly what I need to play the game. It feels great. It feels like it's a fully fleshed out game. I didn't have any problem with the pieces and the quality of the boards and the artwork is excellent. Do I feel like this is an art game? Absolutely. I feel like I'm making paints and canvases and putting them together and then kind of formulating them onto this board here. And it represents kind of like their, their value and their impressiveness as you go up on the board, which might require you to have favor. Like maybe my painting is not such a great painting, but I know the art dealer and he's a nice guy and he's gonna hook it up and allow me to place the painting farther up because I've used a lot of favor from him. And so that's kind of a nice little twist to the game. Oh, I couldn't actually get this extra action done because I've been too busy. So I'm gonna use my apprentice here and he's gonna go ahead and gather favor with Bill here from the art gallery so I can come and utilize him later. And it just fits, it just flows, it's a lot of fun. My wife and I played this game, two players, three players, and even four players, it works just fine. The only difference is that the board shrinks a little bit and uh, the time is kind of set to make it kind of fair and balanced. I do prefer playing this game at three and four players and four is obviously my favorite for these type of games, but I didn't find any issues or qualms with that type of a thing. Yes, there is a little bit of luck in this game as to where the painting pieces are gonna come out, the different types of themes and the different types of colors might not be in your favor, but you have to kind of work around that and it affects everybody. So in that sense, it is also very fair. Uh, yes, I love the puzzling aspect of the game as well. If you might not have noticed, there is puzzling to this game as to how you can place, where you can place, and at what angles, and what kind of bonuses you would prefer to get. Do I want more points? That extra bonus that might provide me with more points later? Or am I not able to place it because I don't have enough favor and I need to take a different type of action? Yes, the Salon de Paris is a fun game. It's a really solid game. It's a little long and it's a little more thick than probably most players are used to, but I feel like once one player knows the rules pretty well and can integrate the game and teach other players, this is a game that pretty much anybody can learn and have a great time with. I'm going to give this my seal of recommendation. It was a ton of fun, and I just love the thematic elements of the game present that kind of put this whole game together. So there's a link down below on Kickstarter, and I strongly suggest you take a look. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Salon de Paris by Town Strike Studios. If you would like, there's a link down below in the description. Click the link, join the Kickstarter, and go ahead and fund it if you think it's worthwhile. And I suggest you do. If this like, seems like your type of game, I think you're really going to enjoy it. And if you go a little bit farther and hit that subscribe button and the bell notification button. If you think you've earned it and you've watched more than one of our videos, perhaps I could convince you to do so. That way you can see more videos just like this one from indie creators, published games, pre-published games, and so on and so forth. Our website has Kickstarter links, has new blog reviews, posts, and giveaways. You can check that out on filtergamer.com. And of course, on Sundays, we have a live stream on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch that we do at 6.30 p.m. PST every week. Whatnot is at 6.30 p.m. PST as well on Whatnot, obviously, and we sell games there. And of course, thank you so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to crafting and constructing some paintings on canvas with you next time.